BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, October 6th. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with a man who just can't get that Wagon Wheel song out of his head, Jerem Jordan. Uh, you know, credit to the homies who make the cut, okay? I'm not sure if we should name names because uh, they're not going to get in trouble. I'll name names. Preston, Courtney, Stu and the gang. Sure, sure. Uh, the cut is an awesome recap from inside the program done internally by, you know, BYU Athletics and the social media team run by Stu Call with his awesome uh, co-workers. Here, Absolutely. His awesome team. And <laughs> in the cut, it's like a 10-minute video. It's amazing. you got to watch it every week. <laughs> There's this shot of the team going to Ogden. You know, they're going to Logan, but they included that. The Ogden joke, I think it was started by Boney Fuller. Was it started by Boney was Fuller? Was it initiated by Boney I, Fuller? I think so. Um, there's no wiki page on this, so who knows? But uh, that's real research, right? No, I'm just kidding. Hey. But they included this shot of Ogden, and it's absolutely what we call an Easter egg mm-hmm. for this particular funny joke. Well, and several BYU fans last night screenshotted said oh, yeah. Easter egg and made sure that yeah. everybody knew about it on Twitter. Yep. So yep. Ogden's on the way to Logan. I thought Ogden was Logan until Friday. Just rolled up to Ogden, and I was like, what? Wait, where's, where's Utah State? Just kidding. I hadn't been to the, uh, to the renovated Maverick Stadium, I think, in a decade, because I produced the pregame show for nine years. What would you think? Oh, it was great. It was great. Much um, needed. I'd been to the Spectrum a couple times you know, since uh, 2010, of course. But, yeah, it was nice. It's always nice to leave the upgraded Maverick Stadium with another BYU win as well. Yeah. Jacob Conover had his collegiate debut He's part of our show lineup today. How do you all feel about Jacob Conover being the starter on Saturday against Boise State? Is BYU primed to beat the Broncos again with a third-string quarterback? We'll discuss with Greg Rubel, the voice of the Cougars. Also, where does BYU have the greatest advantage in their matchup with Boise State with or without a third-string quarterback leading the charge? And it's game day for 20th-ranked BYU women's soccer. Michaela Coulihan will join us to preview BYU's next West Coast Conference foe. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Cougars are preparing for Boise State Saturday on ABC. BYU number 10, 5-0, matched up with the rival Broncos, who Kalani Sataki expects to bring their A game on Saturday. We know that um, you know they're going to be excited to come play us in, in our in our home stadium, and uh, you know we're expecting their best shot. And I say it all the time: we just need to make sure that they get ours as well. Cougar pregame live begins at 1:30 Eastern on BYU Radio. BYU TV's countdown to kickoff: special 90-minute edition. The next two weeks, by the way, two Eastern time. As mentioned, 20th-ranked BYU women's soccer back to work tonight as they welcome. St. Mary's to Southfield kickoff 9 Eastern. You can watch it live on BYU TV app. Michaela Coulihan and company. Well, they had a short-lived stay outside of the top 25. It's <clears throat> nice to beat a ranked team and score six goals on the road in that win over Gonzaga. Thus, the jump back into the top 25. Women's cross country goes from 1 to 2 in the rankings. And men's team is uh, ranked 5th. They're both off this week. Elijah Bryant in his preseason action with the Milwaukee Bucks had two points, three rebounds and a couple of assists. Don't forget a steal in 22 minutes. 87-77 loss to the Grizzlies. Does it really matter, Jaron, because it's the preseason? No, it doesn't. The NBA has a preseason. (laughs) Exactly. Next game, Friday night against the Brooklyn Nets, 7.30 Eastern on NBA TV. Hey, has Kyrie Irving been vaccinated yet? (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) Gabby Garcia Fernandez had 11 points for AS Bali Lube in Italy against Sir Safety Conad Perugia. What? In a sweep win. Yeah, I don't know how to say that. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. Jacob Conover made his collegiate debut against Utah State. Second half, BYU outscored the Aggies 10-7. Okay, just hand the ball off to Tyler Algier. All good. But what if he has a full week of preparation to get ready for Boise State? 
Jerem, are you confident BYU with their number 10 ranking, their 5-0 and record, the home win streak, everything that's on the line, can beat Boise State and extend all of those streaks if Jacob Conover is the starting quarterback? Yeah, I am, because it's not just Jacob Conover that has to win the game. If it was like, listen, it's Jacob Conover versus Boise State, does BYU win? I'm like, hey, hopefully. But we haven't seen what Jacob Conover can do. He's a he's a little college football baby, just a little puppy, you know, just peeing on the carpet, trying to figure it out. Still, it's all good. <laughs> like, it's okay. Like he's he's got time. Hopefully, this week to sort of dial it in. If he's the guy, we'll see if he's the guy. Right? Maybe Jaron Hall's back. Who knows? It, it's I mean, it'd be like a miracle if Baylor Romney's back. Right? It looked like he got a concussion. He's out. So it might be a, a couple weeks with Baylor. Who knows? But this is where this, uh, like, this whole QB conversation from during the summer, right? This is where it's beneficial. The fact that BYU's third string, and I've been screaming this, told Alabama no is pretty awesome. And now if Jacob Conover's the guy, he's got to show what he's got, right? Uh, baller at Chandler with Gunnar Romney, Cash Peterman, the kicker. Bunch of dudes there. Let's go, man. Let's go. Jacob Conover, freshman QB, always wanted to be here. Dad graduated with him as a baby in his arms. He's always wanted to be a Cougar. So now he gets his shot, potentially, Saturday, against a Boise State team that is coming in a little wounded. How motivated will they be? If if Boise State has a, a good game and Khalil Shakir is catching the ball and George Halani's doing his thing and Riley Wimpy's making, who's a member of the church, by the way, is making tackles um, you know, for Boise State's defense, it's going to be a good game. And BYU's defense has got to show up like the second half. The run game's got to be right there with Tyler Algier. Jacob Conover, to me, is the third most um, – he, he's got to show up third compared to Tyler Algier in the run game, O-line, and the defense. If Jacob Conover had to win this game by himself, well, maybe I'm a little more concerned. But right now I go, hey, that second half was a template for what we could see. But the difference is Boise State much better than Utah State, in my opinion, okay. despite two and three. Don't look at two and three and go, ah, this is a win. Listen, Boise State might be – unmotivated and just get just get knocked the heck out Saturday. That might happen. I'm expecting this to be a game, though. Jacob Conover just needs to be a game manager. That's not to say he is a game manager or will be a game manager when he becomes the guy at BYU, and we both think that he's going to be the next guy once Baylor Romney and Jaron Hall move on. Granted, they're sophomores, so <laughs> but, when's, when's that going to happen? All he has to do is be a game manager, which means don't turn the ball over. BYU's been so good this year on offense and as a team because they haven't turned the ball over. They've been very, very efficient. Guess what? Aaron Roderick's a really smart guy. He's going to give Jacob Conover a bunch of throws that are easy, not going to put him in a position to make a bad play. He did in the second half. Turn the ball over. Yes, you will see more of that. All Jacob Conover needs to do is be a game manager. Hand it out to Tyler Algier. James Empey is the center. He's back. He's, uh, we learned from Kalani Satake, he's expecting to play. That's a huge boost to the that offensive line. Massive. We don't know if Harris LaChance is going to play, but if James Empey is back, that's one huge piece that was missing against Utah State that's going to help bolster up that line and help Tyler Algier and Lopini Katoa run and give Jacob Conover a little bit more time to throw some screen passes and some easy throws, get him some confidence, just be a game manager, and that's okay. Like, BYU doesn't need more than that to beat Boise State on their home field with everything that they have going for them right now. And then the defense obviously just needs to do their thing. Four or five opponents this year, BYU's held to 20 points or fewer. If BYU holds Boise State to 20 points or fewer, they will win this game regardless of who's playing quarterback. Defense does their thing. Jacob Conover is the game manager. Don't turn the ball over. There's your recipe for another win. BYU 6-0 and going to Baylor with huge national attention. Tyler Algier is the key to this entire thing to me because if BYU can establish the run, Chew up some clock, move the chains. It's easier for Jacob Conover. It's easier for the defense. It's easier for Aaron Roderick to call second and four than it is second and nine. Certainly. Right? Yes. So I, I, I think Tyler Algier is the key. And guess what? Tyler Algier is the MVP of this team. He really is. I mean, you could argue the offensive line connected there. He's, right? he's uh, replaced Ryan Rico. No. No. Best player is Ryan Rico. MVP. You still think Ryan Rico is a better player than Tyler Algier? Ryan That's Rico is the best player on the team. It's quite the compliment. Like, I think NFL scouts would agree with me. Like, Ooh. at his, like, what he does at his position, he's the best. Like, Tyler Algier is an amazing running back. To me, he's not, um, you know, R- Ryan Rico to me is a better, at the moment, r- better punter than Algier is running back. There's a lot more competition. Like, punters is like whatever nationally, right? Running backs is a bunch of studs. 
Punters, I couldn't name another punter on like almost any other team. I don't really care. But Tyler Algier is the MVP. He's in, he's just playing at such high level, obviously coming off career high. He is such a key here for BYU. And he's such a beast, too. Like, before this season, Tyler Algier, you know, hadn't really had an opportunity against like a like a big-name team to really prove himself. Didn't have a great game on the road against Houston in a big game. Had a really nice – okay, I take it back. The one, the one performance he had prior to this year was at Boise State where he was awesome, that 86-yard run. This year, he has proven bona fide stud running back in college and NFL sure, draft pick. There's sure. a difference there. Like, like J.J. Luigi, love him, 1,100 yards in college, no way he's going to the NFL. You know what I mean? There's a difference between being like a good college running back to, to a like great college guy who's an NFL guy. Understandably, yes. Tyler has become both. Tyler is like a revelation on this team. Best since Jamal Williams, Harvey Unga-esque. I mean, this has been fun to watch. Tyler's got to bring it on Saturday, and he has every game this year. I don't know why BYU would opt to go away from a guy like Tyler out no, well, they, no. Yeah, for no, sure. No, he's Tyler or uh, Aaron Roderick's best friend. Right well, now. and while we're talking about Ryan Rico, even if BYU has some drive stall, he's a weapon. Dude. He's a weapon. It's unbelievable yes, how good yes, he is right he's now. He's a weapon. Pin Boise State deep in their own territory. Let BYU's defense do their thing. Yep. Make Hank Bachmeyer and that Broncos offense have to drive long fields. So, again, even if the game manager or the game management of the quarterback, whoever it is, does not go as planned, it's going to be rain is in the forecast. Oh, Tyler little... O'Chir's like, let it rain, bro. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm bringing it. But even if that offense stalls for BYU, you have a weapon in Ryan Rico. Yes. It and sets up your defense for success. Are all connected together. These are all connected together. And they function as one, and it's to a 5-0 and record, number 10 ranking. It's been sweet. This is a very different scenario for BYU than they faced in 2019 against Boise State in that Baylor-Romney was taking over for a 2-4 and four team, and this BYU team this year is much more complete and deep than that 2019 yeah, squad was. Yeah. Crazy this, confident This right is now. a great scenario for a guy like Jacob Conover to have to step into if he is called upon. Oh, ideal. The only more ideal thing would be being the Alabama quarterback and handing off. To those incredible <laughs> five-star <laughs> athletes. Like, that's like the only other. One uh, after the other. I guess other. Georgia right now, but yeah. Our question of the day. Are you confident BYU beats Boise State if Jacob Conover starts a quarterback? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is. The Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Tyson Peterson. Oh, back-to-back days first. Not as confident as I would be having Baylor or Jaron Hall. Game experience counts for a lot in a game like this. Sure, you want, if you can have one, of your leaders on the field. All that experience. But Based on what we know, yes, we just haven't seen, seen one half. It's in one half. And did you see enough in that one half to make you think that BYU is going to be okay against Boise State? Again, home field. It wasn't about Jacob in that. It was about everybody else. Everybody sort of else kind of picking it up. Yeah. Defense held Utah State to seven points in the second half. Yep. Yeah. It's, yep. I, li- I love that this game is in pro. Ideal scenario for Jacob Conover. All right. Hashtag BYUS on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram if you want to join that conversation. Coming up. More surprising start to the season. BYU or Boise State? The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, joins us. Where does he think BYU has an advantage over Boise State, even if Jacob Conover is the starting quarterback? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. 
My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to, now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on here. Okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple of weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Football's Flying Stock is on demand on the BYU TV app featuring Utah State Recap, Boy State Preview, Gabe Summers, Gumby, what's up? The guest, Ben Bywater in the film room, and Chris Jackson is the newest Steve Blue, which you can see later in the program here today. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, who is also back in Studio B, and as he is so often, the genesis for our stat of the day. <laughs> Hit it! Again, courtesy bop, of, bop, 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 bop. Courtesy of Greg Rubel, Saturday's game versus Boise State will be Kalani Satake's 70th as a BYU head coach. A victory would give him 44 wins. Now, notably, after Lavelle Edwards' 70th game, he had 44 wins. How did you stumble upon that gem, Greg? Well, just to, to be to be accurate there, Lavelle actually picked up his 44th win in his 69th game. Okay. But after 70 games, he had 44 wins. So he lost so the 70th. He did. Yeah. So uh, the point was, after after 70 games, each would have 44, 44 wins, wins if hmm. indeed BYU defeats Boise State That's on Saturday. So, yeah. So I, I ever since Kalani made the reference, I think early, in, it might have been the Davis press conference, it was uh, like in a coach's show, right? Yeah, I, 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 I forget so. what he said, but he, yeah. he talked. He joked about wanting to be the Polynesian Lavelle. Yes. Yeah, and and I thought how cool it was that you know Lavelle's last game as the head coach, you know Kalani played in that game, you know, and it was Kalani's last game as a player was Lavelle's last game as a coach, and you know I still remember the the shots of of Kalani hugging Lavelle on the sidelines as the, as the seconds ticked off in that Utah game, so you know clearly there was a bond, and and then for Kalani to to, to get the job while Lavelle was still with us and, and, and have that transition kind of take place. I've always appreciated the connection between Kalani and Lavelle. And, and a lot of them, and again, they're, they're, they're different guys, clearly, right? But there's a real, um, there's a warmth and a genuineness and a sense of love yes. and affability and real and all these things that kind of tie the two guys together. And so I've, I've always liked kind of tracking Lavelle's start, you know, the start of Lavelle's tenure and the start of Kalani's yes. tenure over the years. And they've had a couple of touch points over the years as they start off because it took a while for Lavelle to really get the thing moving and really clicking. You know, he kind of had his, maybe he, maybe he didn't call it that, but his five-year plan that really started to bear fruit after season five or six. And Kalani's kind of in that same mode in a lot of ways. Now, both guys picked up the programs at different times, but each had challenges unique to their era. And now Kalani's kind of got it rolling a bit. It's just kind of funny that if you hit that number, that they both kind of both kind of be at the same spot, uh, with hopefully the best in front of Kalani still. Sure. Be. And for crying out loud, both had their losing season in the second season. Yeah. It's just wild the parallels. Yeah. That are there's there. an early dip, and then you recover, and and so I I think it's kind of cool. And uh, and again, we can only hope that you know Kalani's ne you know next 10, 15, 20 years are successful as Lavelle's. Um, but, Let's go. Uh, but but you know I, I guess the you know the. Uh, the point you want to touch on is that it takes a little while to kind of get your thing really, really rolling. And that, that's, I think, I think where Kalani is now. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's super fast, like, you know, 12-0 and 0 for Gary Croton and then, you know, three losing seasons. So it's like, was that Lavelle's guys that they just figured it out and then got figured out? I don't know. But, and then sometimes it takes a few years. Okay, so this Saturday... We're talking about if Jacob Connor was the guy, how confident are you BYU beats Boise State? What's your opinion? Uh, very. Uh, and, and I think uh, the fact that you know, coaches ID'd Jacob Conover as the guy that won the game Friday at Utah State. Uh, it took him a little while to get kind of you know, going a bit in that one, to warm up a little bit. But when it came right down to it, he made the plays that BYU needed to keep that offense you know, rolling and scoring and, and winning that game. And so um, I, I don't know that A-Rod called a whole lot different. 
uh, for for Jacob. And I mean, th- th- it's a deep quarterback room, right? And and even when he was just playing scout team last year, you know, Jacob Connor was opening eyes with this team and his teammates. Now, you know, might, might BYU run a little more uh, this week? Maybe, but BYU already runs more than it passes. And Boise's, you know, vulnerability right now is, is on the ground. And so you might see a more ground-heavy game. It could be a function of weather, too. If it's, it's a wet, rainy day, you might be wise to not have Jacob, if Jacob's the guy, throwing it that often. And let's also, you know, note that, you know, Jaron Hall's on the comeback trail here, too. Like, he's getting better. And, and so, you know, we can't count anybody out right now. And, and hopefully, you know, these two weeks where Jaron ha- hasn't had to play will ultimately pay dividends for BYU and get him better uh, ASAP. The I boys- like getting my name mixed in a lot with Jaron. It's happening a lot. Jaron and Jaron? Yeah. It's, uh, it's we're gonna, understandable, we're right? pod. Okay. Jaron and Jaron? Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Boise State, two and three. A lot of emphasis and focus has been put on the record through five games. But Jaron and I feel still that Boise State is a very talented team. In your preparation and in your study of the Broncos, what are they? What What is their identity as a team right now with a record of two and three? Well, as Brent Musburger would say, uh, his guys in the desert. Uh, I'll also agree with you guys. <laughs> um, Boise is a two and three team that's favorite. That's expected to be right there with BYU in this game. And and look who they've lost too, right? It was it was it was UCF away from home. It was Oklahoma State, and it was Nevada with a big second half. Uh, not terrible losses, um, but you know, two and three still two and three. And, it was, you know, the, there are two home losses as well. That's the other thing, yep. too. How often does, does Boise have two home losses this early in the season, let alone in a season? So there are some vulnerabilities. And, and ultimately, you know, we saw BYU uh, totally shut down a Utah State run game that had all kinds of room to run against Boise State. And, and, and so I, I think BYU is going to have to, you know, explore the holes that have been present uh, through, I mean, on, on the ground to see where that takes BYU because they're really vulnerable. They're, they're around 100th in, in both, you know, rush yards allowed per game, but more importantly, rush yards allowed per carry. Um, and, and conversely, BYU is like top 50 in, in rush yards per game, but like top 30 in rush yards per carry. When the Cougars choose to run, they do it really, really well. And this might be the game where you simply choose to run a bit more based on how Boise's giving it up, how great BYU's been on the ground, and maybe even weather plays a function if it is indeed a rainy game. And maybe fresh from quarterback like we were talking about. Right, like, all just these make things. make it like, easier, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so um, 5-0 and start. This has been incredible, right, for BYU number 10. What's been sort of the most surprising part of this for you? Maybe how clean BYU's been uh, with, 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 you know, a, a lot lost on the offensive line and then injuries hitting an offensive line. There's been a lot of shuffling up front in the front five. Uh, "Quote unquote new OC." We know AR is not really the new OC, but you know ultimately it's his game for the first time, start to finish, and and there's been absolutely no <clears throat> loss in continuity whatsoever that way. Uh, and the fact you've had to use three quarterbacks. So if you if you go you know largely new and shuffling offensive line, three quarterbacks, uh, new OC. Wow, to be so clean, uh, you know a top twenty team. In, in, in red zone uh, touchdown percentage, a top 15 in red zone scoring percentage, two turnovers through five games. Amazing. Clean, sharp, productive when they need to be. So if not, I'm not going to say like, oh, I'm blown away, but you know, I guess you're pleasantly surprised that you'd start these five games with all those things being there, all those elements, and still you're winning and you're not turning it over and you're not getting penalized very frequently. I mean, they're, they're a low penalty team. And again, yeah. penalties aren't the biggest you know, determinant for win or losses, right. but it's when they come and how they come and, and, and BYU hasn't really been hurting itself that way either. So uh, clean, and, and that's maybe not the huge surprise, but a nice thing to see in 5-0. In and oh. And the fact that BYU's played three quarterbacks, just insane in this. Well, yeah. like, and like if you had said, Taysom Hill's the starting quarterback, does BYU get to 5-0 and oh preseason? We're like, listen, 4-1 and one would be incredible. No, it's been 5-0 and oh with three different dudes. Yeah. That ability for him as the QB coach as well to prepare those guys is, is really significant. No, it, it's like you know, last year Zach was the guy 1 through 12, right? But as we've talked about many times, that's the exception, not the rule. I think A-Rod on Coordinator's Corner said of the 130 FBS teams, roughly 20 get through a year yes. with one guy. That's unbelievable. Crazy. So a large majority will need more than one, and, that, and BYU's already gotten to three through five games and still where they are. <laughs> it's really, really impressive. And, and one of the great things, too, about you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're pitching your quarterbacks, you're not just you know, blowing smoke when you say – you know, you know, there, there's a good chance you'll play. Now, there's a really, really, you know, strong chance you're going to be needed. So, so don't think anything other than that. So it's great to be deep that way. Greg Rubel, the voice of the Cougars, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. The defense, we noted a couple of times uh, this week now, 
holding opponents at least four of the five to 20 points or fewer. What has been the most impressive part about BYU's defense, statistically speaking? It's points. It's all about the points. Uh, I broke it down this week and I had to go back to 1984-85 to find the last time BYU had this many games allowing fewer than 28 points or fewer than four touchdowns, right? And so that's a pretty long run where no one really got off on you. No one really got loose on you. And, and this year's schedule is different than last year's schedule. That said, the P5's BYU played never got out of the teens. Arizona State could have easily done that, did not. Oh, they're a really good team. Yeah. They're actually a really good team. In fact, they're back in the rankings, right? Back in the top 25. Uh, and, and uh, you know, BYU kept that team in the teens. That's, that's, that's saying something. So, to me, it's all about the points allowed. And, and BYU's, yeah, they're, they, they've given up some long drives. They've had a tough time getting off the field on some third downs. Um, but ultimately... When it comes time to either take the ball away, which they do really well, or stiffen up in scoring territory, which they do really well, that's what's keeping the point number down. And so BYU is keeping things in front of them, quote unquote, and when it really matters, paying off with a tenacious, ball hungry defense and a defense that makes it really hard to get in the end zone when you've got a chance to score. So they'll, you know, n- n- not that it's purely like they that they want to give up long drives and 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 are okay with giving up, you know, third down conversions. But ultimately, um, if teams are playing from behind and they're going to have to use a lot of snaps and a lot of plays and a lot of yards to get where they want to go and they don't get there eventually, then ultimately BYU will take that trade off. As a play-by-play, are you used to the line changes for BYU defensively? Yeah, now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unique and different, but yeah. BYU's trying to stay fresh. Right. And seven, eight, nine guys sometimes at a time will be going off and coming on. <laughs> and we had an 11 last year, I think, right? Once yeah. Twice. So then that's the way, you know, Coach E and Coach yeah. Itake choose to roll. And, uh, I, again, I, you cannot complain with, with the way it's all turned out because, ultimately, it's, it's points allowed, and, and that's what BYU is doing really well. And it helps, too, when you're playing with the lead all the time, right? Right. BYU stat, hasn't trailed. The stat's out there, right? I mean, there are four teams that haven't trailed yet this season. BYU is one of them. The last game they trailed in was San Diego State last December. And so when you play with the lead, you've got a nice comfort zone that kind of you know, helps everybody play better complementary football. All right, Greg, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Zach Wilson and what he did on Sunday with the New York Jets and the NFL. Do you feel like this is the turning point for Zach, or do you feel like it's going to be a little more up and down just based on how the NFL is? Well, whether it was the exhibition season or even the first couple of games when you know he struggled with interceptions, but the, the, the ingredients were always there. You could still see it, and, and it's a function of time and, and timing. And if you give Zach enough time, or even if you don't and allow him enough space to make his own time, he will cut you apart, and that's what he's been doing. And I, I, I guess I'm, I, I really uh, love how so many eyes get opened, you know, from people who've been around the NFL a long, long time. They're seeing this guy going, like, he's making wow throws, and, and he's only a rookie, and he's just barely games into this, and they're not a complete team around him yet, and they struggle to protect at times. But he's doing these things that, you know, we saw for so many times that, well, yeah, that's who he is. <laughs> But doing it at the next level is, is the coolest thing. And again, seeing NBA, seeing NFL veterans just so impressed by this guy is, is one of the newest things. Well, it's NBA it. veterans, too. Yeah, Draymond Green. everyone is. Yeah, yeah Draymond Green. They are taking Perkins, notes. They are Perkins, taking notes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Draymond Green, a couple of games yeah. ago or whatever, right? Um, women's soccer tonight. Uh, on Saturday, BYU just blows out Gonzaga mm-hmm. and it like had to have a game. So first, let's talk that performance. Then let's talk about the bat. Yeah, the bat situation. Yeah, well, first of all, they go to Gonzaga, and Gonzaga was ranked 16th and uh, program record eight-game win streak and, and thinking this is the year they, they, might, they might finally get BYU because they never never beaten them and then BYU. But it was a very close game. It was 6-1. to one. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> Gonzaga had allowed three goals all year. Oh, okay? they, they, they'd allowed three goals in 11 games, and BYU had four in the first 15 minutes. That's amazing. So that was just the ultimate, like, well, here we go again for Gonzaga. So that, that, the cool part is they won 6-1. And then uh, with, like, 10 minutes to go in the match, uh, yeah, bat on the pitch. And I think the reason the bat was, like, lying on the pitch, uh, we believe he got stepped on. Someone did step on the bat. And so that's why he was a little bit uh, concussed, maybe, oh. and wasn't able to just, like, completely fly away immediately. The bat's out two weeks. We were... so, so, the, so the bat pinchers, uh, <laughs> bat, bats, in, bats in the protocol. Uh, <laughs> so the pinchers came out, and they, they, they were ready to take care of it there up in Spokane, and they did. Manu and, Ginobili was not around. No, I, 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 I didn't mention, is not going to sue didn't anybody. Manu on, on the broadcast. Not, not there to swat it down. But you know, once he was being taken off, um, he spread those wings, and that was that was not a small like little fruit bat. This was uh, what are we talking about here? This was this was a like a scary movie bat. This is a Halloween bat. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow! Wow. Had you have you seen a bat at an event before? 
Was that uh, like the first for you? The Manu Ginobili one. I, well, I, I mean, yeah. like, where no, you were. No, I, I don't recall being at an event where a bat was present. <laughs> yeah. Other than a baseball game where there are many bats. Many bats. Yeah. Yeah. So many bats. All right, Greg, we look forward to your call on BYU Radio tonight. Uh, I'll be called on BYU TV with yeah. the Carla Swenson Haslam. and uh, Bring a poncho. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Rain, rain <laughs> in the forecast. It's okay. We, we played through it. Thanks for the time and uh, the insight. Always my pleasure, guys. Okay, coming up, Michaela Coulihan on a game day for soccer against St. Mary's. Is she, she prepared for a bat tonight? And we just talked about Zach Wilson. Is his team, the New York Jets, building things up around him in the right way? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with the free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. The ninth-ranked BYU women's volleyball has won 21 sets in a row. Ha! Ah! Will likely make that 24 when it hosts Portland tomorrow night, 9 Eastern, on the BYU TV. He is Jaron Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and find amazing content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it, shall we? The Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Are you most surprised with BYU's 5-0 start or Boise State's 2-3 and three start? Uh, this is all about BYU's 5-0 start. Three Power 5 wins, number 10 in the country. As weird as Boise State's start has been to the season, it hasn't garnered nearly as much attention as BYU has with the 5-0 start. We're talking about BYU's maybe the best team in the West with college football playoff chances. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's been more surprising. They're equally surprising to me. Boise State losing thrice and two at home. That's crazy. Tyler Algier is a finalist for the Orange Bowl Player of the Week. That is decided by a poll on Twitter, apparently. Do we care about this, Jeremy? And if so, have you voted yet? Uh, no. No. Okay, you don't even care enough to vote. What does Tyler Algier have to do with the orange? Sorry, I only care about polls in a pandemic. Yeah. Are we still in the pandemic? We're still in it, right? Listen, they're trying to create some buzz for the Orange Bowl and the New Year's Six. That I, yeah, I don't, I don't care. Like, if this were the Fiesta Bowl poll, then I probably would vote. Maybe. Right? Because I think BYU could potentially be there. I don't there. have time to click something that takes 0.8 seconds. Dan Orlovsky says the Jets are building Zach Wilson the right way. Are they? What, what does that even mean? I don't know. That, that's my question. What does that mean? They're building Zach Wilson the right way. Zach Wilson is who he is. He's building himself. Now, I can I know that they can build a support system around him, and maybe that's what he means, but 
Um, I honestly, I trust Zach Wilson more than I trust the New York Jets right now because of so. because of who Zach Wilson is. Yeah, why would we trust the Jets more than Zach Wilson? And the way that he carries himself. So I don't think it's about the Jets. I think it's about Zach Wilson being Zach Wilson. They need a good run game, good O line, and a good defense. Do they have those things? No. They're well, they have a good work, de- they have a good defense. Working on it. Well, they have a good defense. Their defense is pretty good, actually. So uh, maybe maybe they're helping him out that way. All right, BYU soccer is averaging 3.4 goals per game, four and a half goals per game at home. So over under three and a half goals tonight against St. Mary's. Over in the last, what, four wins for BYU? Cougars scored 27 goals. So I'm going over. Yes. Uh, Good luck, St. Mary's. BYU is going to rip off about 35 shots tonight. 35 in the rain? I'm gathering that they will probably score five goals. So I'm definitely going over. Okay. Coming up. A new deep blue on Chris Jackson going from homelessness to a receiver on scholarship at BYU. And uh, we were just talking about BYU women's soccer. Their star, Michaela Coulihan, is going to join us live. Maybe she'll score five goals on her own, Jerem. Mm, that'd be good. This is BYU Sports News. I'd take that right now. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. sounds you hear in sketches are created by me, Carol Dinky. A demonstration. I'm able to make a lot of weird sounds with just one tool out of all of these. This guy. Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Michaela Coolahan and number 20 BYU host Santa Maria tonight on the BYU TV app, 9 Eastern, baby, and BYU Radio. That's always good to beat the Gales. You know what? I'm planning on a BYU victory over the Gales. We can, we can That's project that, That's typically the hope. We can project that. Yeah, I mean, BYU's number 20. Let's go. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from Studio B, the number 18 college show in the country. <laughs> Were that low? I don't know. I don't, maybe, oh, we jumped up the rankings for number we're six. The, did you, did, so we're the only university-run national yes. simulcast. So we're number one that way. We're number one. We're number, we are number we one. It. We did it. Joining us now, a young lady that uh, in some circles is considered the number one player to ever put on a BYU women's soccer uniform. In this circle. Holy cow. Michaela Coulihan joins us over Zoom. Fresh off her team's sixth goal performance in a win against the top 20 Gonzaga team. Now BYU is back in the top 20 at number 20. Michaela, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Uh, We're great. Not as good as you guys. Six goals against Gonzaga. (laughs) Uh, What was said as you sat on a tough loss for about a week? Two weeks. Two weeks to get you ready for the Gonzaga outpouring. Uh, I think that there didn't need to be a ton said, honestly. After that loss to Utah State, I think we all just uh, had so much motivation and desire to kind of figure things out. And I think the two-week 
two weeks that we had off were kind of a nice break and we came together as a team collectively and uh, kind of put it all together and that result at Gonzaga showed. Okay, how did you come together? Because to have 30 shots and to lose to Utah State was, I know, extremely disappointing for you guys. And then you have a bye week and then you know you're playing the Zags who are having, you know, their best year ever. Uh, they're number 16. They're feeling like, hey, maybe we can be the big dog here. And you guys responded in a massive way. So how did you come together? Because that could have been a kind of ripping point for this team. Yeah, um, I think that the practice that we had where we didn't have games, or sorry, we didn't have games. And so we just had two weeks of practice. And um, I think we kind of had a meeting and it just shifted our thinking a little bit. You know, it was a time of, okay, we to come together now, conference is starting, or we're going to look back and, and say, what did we do, you know? So we came together as a team. We discussed things that we kind of felt like we were missing, and uh, things just started to click. I think that in our, our previous games so far in the season, um, we played really well, but the results haven't really shown that. We've, we've lacked finishing, or we've, we've given up silly goals and things like that, and I think we're all aware of that, and it was kind of, um, something that we just said out loud and acknowledged, and then we came together, and and like I said, it all showed, and and it was nice to kind of see everything click. BYU six three and one overall. They host St. Mary's tonight. Michaela Coolahan is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We just talked to uh, our buddy and your buddy Greg Rebel about that Gonzaga game and the unique bat on the field situation. Michaela, <laughs> where were you in relation to? the bat that apparently was concussed and just hanging out on the soccer pitch. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually had just been subbed out. I was on the sideline and um, I think I was just talking with one of my coaches or teammates and I didn't even see it come in. And all of a sudden I looked over and everyone was kind of paused and there was something laying on the ground. I had no idea what it was and then got word that it was a bat. And I was like, what the heck? You know, <laughs> I was trying to get out of there and bats scare me. I didn't want to be anywhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> More startling moment, the flyover against Missouri or the bat against Gonzaga? The flyover for sure, because the flyover scared me more than anything has in a long time. <laughs> okay, I'm sitting there calling that game, and I knew it was going to happen at some point. I looked up at 7.58, and I thought, this flyover was going to happen at some point. It was like 8.07, 8.11 or something. And you wouldn't have been out there with the flyover, but there were 11 goals. So I think it's uh, your fault. I think it's, the you know, the whole team's fault that you guys were even out there, Michaela. You guys scored seven goals. I know. <laughs> I know. That flyover was crazy. I I think we all just kind of, like, dropped to the ground right as it happened because <laughs> it caught us off guard. I didn't, I didn't even know it was happening, so it was, like, freaky. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was gnarly, but you guys overcame. And then, you know, uh, let's talk about some of those ups and downs you mentioned. So when you guys have won the last four, you've scored seven, 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 and six goals. When you lost, it's kind of been, like you said, like a, like a one-goal kind of game, right? And you guys played a tough schedule. You went out on the road and challenged yourself. Cam Tucker got hurt. That certainly affected things. But where is this team at? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're feeling good coming off the Gonzaga game, but now you're in conference play. You're going to play your rival and defending national champion Santa Clara, you know, soon. Uh, you have a chance to go back to the NCAA tournament, make a run, your last hurrah here. What's the vibe with this group right now as you hit the most important stretch of the season? Yeah, I think the vibe is great. I think it's better than it has been. Not that we've we've lacked that, but like I said, I think that we've just lacked the the final touch, the last piece to putting it all together. And and though we've played well, I think now we've got experience and we're playing at a high level. And I think the Gonzaga game just really gave us all that confidence we needed and uh, we showed up and proved what we're capable of, and I think now it's just um, up to us to kind of continue putting it all together and showing up every game. And, and now that we're in conference, it's just it's all ahead of us, and I think we're on a great path, and I, I love the chemistry that we have going, and I'm excited for us. Now, there are cool, wet, rainy conditions expected for tonight against St. Mary's. How do you prepare for a game like that when the pitch is so slick? And uh, how do you overcome those conditions? Yeah, I, some people actually really like playing in the rain. Um, I think soccer for a wet field, it kind of can play to our advantage because it speeds things up. Um, I personally don't love playing when it's actually raining, but but I think that um, we can use it to our advantage. I think that we'll know that the ball will move a little bit quicker, and so we'll just be prepared for that. And 
I don't know, maybe some people will pull out the the spikes, the metal spikes. That's what we use sometimes when it's raining and uh, it can help people keep that traction a little bit. <laughs> hey, you can always slip the ground screw like a like a 20, you know, if you want it real wet before the game. They can just, oh, the sprinklers were left on. Crazy, that's nuts. Okay, you're second in shots. What, per... <laughs> so, what was that? They did that to us at Utah. They turned the sprinklers on before the game. So. <laughs> okay, and you were like, fine, I like it. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> second in shots per game uh, in the in the country, uh, and then seventh in points. How do you balance when you need to attack versus when you need to set up your teammates? Um, I think it kind of depends, you know, reading the game. Um, I try to do whatever's required in the game most. You know, if I have a teammate that's making a good run down the side or and I feel that they're available and open, I'm going to do everything I can to get them the ball. But sometimes, you know, it, it's called upon me to – be able to be the one to finish and to make sure I'm getting myself in the box, getting opportunities to get my shot off too. So I think it's just a fair balance and, and it depends on the way different teams play us to take advantage of whatever they're giving us. Michaela Coulihan, All-American BYU Women's Soccer with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's give you some karma for tonight's St. Mary's game. You know how this works, Michaela. You're about to play an incredible game. Not that you don't play an incredible game every game, but it'll be even more incredible. So take it and go, and good luck tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. It'll be it'll be because of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take full we credit. Take, yes, we will take that credit. Thanks, Michaela. Yep. Thank you, guys. She is a star for 20th ranked BYU women's soccer. She's awesome. And uh, I've recorded a Deep Blue podcast with Michaela, kind of chronicling her journey and some of the struggles she's gone through. If you want to download it uh, on the BYU radio app or where podcasts are found, man, it's a fun conversation. She's got some good soccer bloodlines, too. Saw yes. Chloe yep. for a few years uh, from 2013 to 2014. And then uh, she told well, Chloe said, look, you watch out for my uh, my little cousin, Michaela. She's little did we know. She's coming in big time. Little did we yeah. know, man. One of BYU's the first two-time first-team All-American ever. It's incredible. BYU's had first-team All-Americans, but not tw- twice. And that's why she's in the conversation for maybe the greatest uh, ever. If Jen Rockwood says she is, I'm just going, yep. Right? Yeah. Coming up, today's Rise and Shout. And an incredible, emotional deep blue feature on BYU wide receiver Chris Jackson. How he overcame homelessness to get to where he is today. This is BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Stories have a way of framing some of the important conversations that we're already having and giving us the language that we sometimes have a hard time finding. The Appleseed is a show filled with stories for you and your family. Tall tales, fairy tales, folk tales, personal and family tales, all kinds of tales from all kinds of tellers. And we always hope that the stories that we bring you on a show spark memories for you that you can share with the people that you love. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Download the podcast, subscribe, rate, and review.
Life can certainly be difficult. And for BYU receiver Chris Jackson, life has been more difficult than normal. This is Deep Blue, presented by Brady Industries, Simply Better. I grew up in Pomona, California. It's probably like 30 minutes from L.A. It was gangs. You're going to have to defend yourself at one point. Like, that's just the culture, really. That's really just the culture. That's something you have to watch out for. But I was never, like, into it, though. It's easy to sell drugs here. It's easy to go, you know, join a gang or such things like that. So the fact that he was able to really just, once again, keep that tunnel vision and to just kind of, you know, brush off all those things that he was going through and, and come perform every day at practice, every day on the field, it really amazes me. If you know Chris Jackson, he don't talk much. But yes, we was. We was homeless for seven years. My brothers and sisters was homeless. My mom, she's on the streets doing drugs. So as a 17-year-old kid, I'm like, there's only so much I can do. Like, I'm, like, under y'all wing. There's only so much I can do. And being, if you really love your mother, just being a 17-year-old boy, like, that can bother you. Like, going to bed, knowing your mother is sleeping on the streets, there's nothing you can do about it. Knowing your brothers and sisters is sleeping on the streets, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, my little sister, she was only, like, eight years old at the time. But we worked it out as a family. So as, as dad, I have a past, but I'll never teach my kids, don't repeat what I did. You have a chance. Do that. I feel like that right there just motivated him and, like, I'm, this is not the life I want to have for the rest of my life, so I'm going to continue football and get to where I need to get to so no nobody in my family has to ever struggle again. If you was to ask him, he's saying that he's working for his family. That would be, like, his first answer. He always tell me anything go wrong, just pray. And he just believe in God and that he trusts in God with everything he does. And that's how we get through our stuff, believing in God. And that's how he get through his stuff, believing in God, too. Out of high school, Chris was a very, a very highly recruited player. And just due to his circumstances, wasn't able to, to take on any scholarships. He had to go to the junior college route. We were at different schools, but a lot of time I, I would go visit him out on his campus. And, since, and I knew he was homeless and I knew he was sleeping in front of places and stuff, and once again, he never really showed it or always addressed it to me, but I knew. So that's why when, you know, he asked for, for some food or for some shelter, you know, I would, I would try my best to provide that for him. Like, a lot of guys that, went, that came straight from high school to D1, they don't understand, like, the Juco struggle, but it's really real. Like, you're, you're in a two-bedroom with, like, 14 people sleeping on the floor. Like, that's, kind, that's how it is. You're, you might be in a three-bedroom with, like, 20 people. That's literally how it is. There was times I probably went without eating multiple times and still had to practice multiple times. And it gets to the point where you can go without eating so much, you get used to it. So it's like you're just going off water and crackers. Going through that made me disciplined because when you're in JUCO, you're still fighting for a scholarship. So you don't get comfortable. You're still... So now I still have that same mentality that I'd never leave. To go through his, his junior college career the way he did and to still be able to make it out and, and be, be eligible and willing to um, you know, attend university says a lot about him. It was cool to have that script flipped on me where I was thinking, huh, is this a kid we can, we're going to be able to take, who can make it to BYU too? We need this kid at BYU. When Fessy actually called me and offered me, I was actually homeless at that time. I was um, sleeping in my car. He called me at nighttime and he offered. But when he like when he offered, it was just I cried for a long time. Yeah, that was that was a blessing. The fact that so much of the adversity he's just been through, you know, with his family, with uh, you know, being like homeless, and not, I've seen Chris struggle, and that's what makes me when I go to these games. There's no joy in the world of, of seeing him on that seeing him on that field because of so much he's just overcome it. 46, so they need to get a full five yards. Pressure comes, a throw with the hit, and a nice delivery. That's a good time. Chris Jackson with a catch for the BYU first down. For me, it's a dream come true to have guys like that here at BYU. He's, he's made our lives better. He's made our program better. And it's not just about um, making plays on the field. It's seeing someone that struggles I'll become a great example to his teammates and 
Um, but the struggles just all haven't just stopped since he got here. But to see him overcome it again and again and again and again, you just want him to just win all the time. So I'm hoping he gets that, that opportunity. He deserves it. How about that smile from Chris Jackson? What a story. Uh, Deep Blue, once again presented by Brady Industries. Love to see what these players have gone through and overcome. And, and how do you not root for a guy knowing what his background has been like that? That's incredible. Like, like when I think my life's hard, it's not been hard. It's not been hard. His life's harder than mine, right? And uh, what he's overcome to be here, talking about not only being homeless and, and how his family's, you know, gotten through that, but also not eating sometimes, you know, and, and having getting to used practice. to it. This you're living on crackers and water. There, there are people who, you know, talk about intermittent fasting, but no, that's forced, right? Um, the, there's a place for everybody here at BYU, and there's a place for Chris Jackson. And like Kalani said, I'm so glad that he's at BYU. It's great to have him here. His role will increase on the field, but it may may not even matter. You know what I mean? It yeah. Matter. And, you know, I mean, having watched that, you want a guy like Chris Jackson to succeed. And I, ho- I hope yes. he has, a, you know, a couple of notable plays against Boise State. I would That's, love to see him make some plays this week. That's week-end. why we're doing these stories, so that we can uh, humanize these guys and, and girls and, uh, you know, tell their stories in, in a variety of ways. That's why we're here. That's what we're doing. Our question of the day, dealing with that Boise State game we're just talking about that Chris Jackson and his teammates are getting ready for. Are you confident BYU beats Boise State if Jacob Conover starts at quarterback? At daddyo underscore seven tweets in, I'm confident-ish. Boise, (laughs) with a Z specifically, (laughs) will be a very rough game. They're a wounded animal coming into this game. They're hungry and want this one bad for a number of reasons. Will be a tough game no matter who plays at quarterback. Yeah, I I can see where this will be a tough game. Yeah, at J Floyd three fourteen on Twitter. Yes, I'm confident BYU wins regardless of who starts. BYU's better in the trenches on both sides of the ball. One hundred fifth best run defense the country is, and stopping Tyler Algier, we can line up Spencer Linton at QB and be fine in this one. Now I do like the idea of uh, you at QB. Let's go. No. Go. (laughs) I'm ready to be the game manager. I'm ready to hand off to Tyler Algier. Coach, which way do I turn when I uh, when the ball snap? Okay. Spence, Over I'm, a, this left shoulder. I'm just afraid of third okay. and six plus. That's all. <laughs> no, listen, we're punting. Like Ryan Rico will be Punting the on third down. <laughs> we'll hand it off on third and six, get stopped, and I'm happy to hand it out to Ryan Rico. We may punt on third down. Let's see. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Nate Farnsworth on Instagram says, the dude, Jacob Conover, told Nick Saban, no thank you. I think we will be just fine. Okay. Let's go. Today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Chris Jackson. Absolutely. And to BYU Women's Soccer for turning things around and watch them live tonight. Our thanks to today's guests, Greg Rebell and Michaela Coulahan. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, we ran out of time, bro. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Let's give a shout out to Jen Rockwood for what she's doing for the BYU Women's Program. And we'll see you again tonight, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain, on the BYU TV app. The Cougars host St. Mary's. Hey, where did you catch this football? I got to work on my form. No. Go Cougs. Go to the Nukuas.